This video is on the preparation of salts. Basic salts are things that are positive in front and uh, negative at the back. And the back usually comes from the acid. Okay, the three methods are in general there are three methods they are titration, ionic precipitation, and adding excess solid to acid. So these are the three. Okay. Now when we want a group one salt, example, uh, potassium nitrate uh, we would never do this we will never put potassium plus nitric acid yes the reaction will carry on you will get potassium nitrate and hydrogen gas but what you will get is a very violent reaction with a big explosion because group 1 metals are simply highly reactive too reactive okay, so no no do not put a group 1 metal a reactive metal into acid. Even in water, you will get fire. You will catch fire. So please do not do that. This is very dangerous. So how do we solve it? So this is explained. No, you get a big booms. That happens. You will still get your HN, KNO3 and hydrogen gas, but at your own expense. So how do we do it? So we will use a process known as titration for group one salts. So example, if I want NaNO3, this is the sort that I want. What two things will I put in? So look carefully, run through your four general equations of acid. What acid will I put inside? I will use a acid known as nitric acid because it will give me the NO3. Okay, and then I will use a sodium. I, in this case, I will use a sodium hydroxide. So for all group 1 metals, just let's make it simple. Let's use the hydroxide since they are alkaline metals and they will form alkalines. So all the hydroxides. And this is what you get. Okay, so get the equation right. Get the compounds right first and then we proceed. Okay, so this is how it goes. Alkaline. In titration, the alkaline can be placed in the burette or and the acid can be placed in the conical flask or vice versa. So in this case, I will put the acid here. I will measure a fixed amount of acid. I will pipette it inside. Leave it there. It is fixed. The alkaline will be varying. And then what I will do is I will add a few drops of indicator. So in this case, let's use a universal indicator to just make the story easy. But in real life, we will not use universal indicator. There are complications. I will tell you later. So let's, let's use the universal indicator as a guide to help you explain. Universal indica indicator turns, will turn red. Its original color, when it is neutral, in water is green. So remember, it is green, original color. When it is neutral condition, it is green. But when you add it to acid, it will turn red. So now, this is what I have. I have acid, the indicator red. So, when I add alkaline in, and drops of alkaline goes in, the part that touches will turn green. But because there are so much acid there, when I swirl, the acid will dominate, and the whole solution will be acid because not all the acid is used up. So I will keep on adding, adding alkaline, alkaline, and when do I stop? I stop when point of neutralization is reached, known as the end point, and the solution will now turn green, telling me that all the acid is neutralized. And that's when I know I will stop the reaction. So I will keep on doing this okay, a few times until I find out the correct volume of acid that is, sorry, the correct volume of alkaline that is needed. And then when I, when I find out the correct volume, I will take the average. So I, have, I will have about three readings. So maybe it will look like this. Maybe the first time I take will be 21.0. This is the initial reading. This is the final reading. Second reading I take will be 21.5. Third reading I take from 0 all the way down to 21.0. So in an experiment, it may not be accurate. You may not get everything the same. You may get three different readings. So what do you do? Three different volumes. So what do you do? You take an average. So 21 plus 21.5 plus 21. Divide by three readings. And this will give me a average reading. AR. I will take the average reading and use it for my last titration. But in this case, 
I will not add any indicator. I will just back in the average reading. I will just use the average reading. Maybe it's 21, what, whatever. I'll just put it into the same fixed volume of acid that I've been using. Okay. And when it goes in, I have to take it and believe that everything I do is correct and all the acid is neutralized. So now I get the salt and the water that I desire. And what do I do with this? I will perform a crystallization, which is simply just putting this salt solution and water into an evaporating dish, heating it until about maybe 75% of the water has evaporated and leaving it to cool over time and letting water to, to evaporate at its own time and I'll get dry crystal. Crystallization basically is heating, stopping, allowing it to evaporate gradually. Evaporation to dryness is just heating it all the way until the water just simply boils off. So two different techniques.